Now, Rwanda's 1994 genocide still invokes strong emotions in many who witnessed it. Architect turned activist Alfredo Jar of Chile reflects on the lack of international attention given to the massacre that claimed the lives of nearly one million Rwandans. Newsweek is one of the oldest and most respected weekly U.S. magazines dating back to 1933. Its covers always reflect the most current events. But at a recent discussion in Washington with Malian filmmaker Manthea Diawara, Ja took issue with how the magazine missed the most important current event between April and July in 1994 in Rwanda until it was over. August 1st, 1994. Newsweek magazine dedicates its first cover to Rwanda. Ja takes issue with other Western media too that downplayed the massacres. This is May 13, 1994, the New York Times. This is page A5. This is time on August 1st, 1994. This is the beginning of the final days. Ja, whose country, Chile, also experienced a period of violence, says what he calls the criminal indifference of the world community toward the killings in Rwanda compelled him to go there. I was ashamed of being a human being at the time. I really expected people in the streets marching every day asking their governments to stop these killings. But this country was mesmerized with uh, O.J. Simpson. And the media was just giving it and giving it and giving it. And so I went and uh, I accumulated this horrific material. And of course, when I came back, I didn't know what to do with it. What do you do with this? If nobody cared, so why? Filmmaker Manthea Diawara attributes the tapered reaction to the bombardment of negative images in the media, not only about the continent, but worldwide. When there is a problem going around the world today, uh, a humanitarian crisis is uh, it's like a commodity, it's like a TV show. This is true of images everywhere, you know, they will call it breaking news and it keeps coming, it keeps coming, it makes you numb. So you don't really have a way of taking it seriously. Ja says he came up with, as he puts it, strategies to share his Rwanda experience. Placing boxes like these around a city in Sweden, displaying the thousands of pictures he took while in Rwanda at various exhibitions and museums, even spotlighting the names of the cities where the genocide took place outside the mayor's office of Lyon, France. Ja says he uses the in-your-face strategy to reawaken people's humanity. He cites the ongoing conflict in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo as an example of how the world is disconnected. He says the minerals, coltan and tungsten, used in electronic devices such as laptops and cell phones are at the heart of that conflict. If you knew What's happening in the Congo today? Because of the phone you're using, you would just drop your phone. You would never use your phone. Everything is connected. We are not disconnected anymore. Yes. Diawara agrees and says through his films, he tries to provide an outlet for Africans to tell their own stories. What I do as much as I can in my documentaries is to, to give voice to Africans to explain situations, to push aside the World Bank advisors, to push aside all the PhDs and all the political leaders in Africa, and to put my camera in front of the regular person to talk about issues. <clears throat> well, that's so sad, you know, to sad know. Sad story, yeah. yeah.